One of the things that is most fascinating to children is being able to conquer items from the imagination or even history that they can't physically be with. And nothing personifies this more than dinosaurs. They represent an absolute core fantasy, fear, and empowerment for children. I mean, these are giant, scary, prehistoric monsters, and you can own them, put them on your toy shelf, and feel a sense of control over them. What more could a child want than to feel control over such a scary big world than to have total control over these giant beasts that used to walk the earth? And no offense to dinosaurs if I'm calling you beasts. I know you may not appreciate that. But yeah, the concept of dinosaurs, while they might seem like they would be scary to children, because they don't exist anymore except in movies, TV shows, and my backyard... Children can feel a sense of control over them and can stand up to these monsters that can really only be seen as skeletons in museums. And that's why when toy lines come around that are centered around dinosaurs, they honestly do so well. It's almost like writing your own success story and, you know, you know printing your own money, shall we say. And one of the more notorious lines that involved dinosaurs was Dino Riders from the late 80s, which was a Tyco line that came out to jump on the whole bandwagon of TV and toys having the syncrasy they had in the 80s due to the deregulation of the FCC in the early Reagan era. Now, Dino Rider toys were not something we'd never seen before, the idea of you know humans riding on dinosaurs. But it had a really unique spin where the bad guys controlled the carnivores and the good guys befriended the herbivores, so hence you had dinosaurs with teeth versus dinosaurs with, well, I guess they all had teeth, but sharp teeth versus plant teeth. And the characters likewise, you had human soldiers and you had evil, monstrous, alien creatures for the bad guys. Very easy for kids to understand and very easy to comprehend the storyline. You didn't even need a book or a comic to realize that you were basically taking humans and putting them on top of dinosaurs and smashing them into each other. Things like firing missiles and other smaller accessories all made the fun more expandable and really was designed to be kind of the next Star Wars, the next He-Man. It was an idea that was born in the shower. I actually was uh, had the fortune to speak to the Tyco executive who created Dino Riders when I was at Mattel, and he mentioned to me about how the idea just came to him in the shower one day. Unfortunately, as the line grew, and it did so very quickly, that became the uh, anchor that essentially held it from expanding even longer. It was the size. In order to have the dinosaurs being impressive against the humans, the humans were already scaled down and smaller than things like Star Wars figures, but... It's one of the things that holds the line from coming back, is that in order for dinosaurs and humans to interact, the humans have to be small, but the dinosaurs still have to be very big. So, Dino Riders has had a tough time making a comeback. We've had some non-articulated toys in the past two years, and some what are called slug figures, like the little army men, but going back to having the actual traditional human riding on dinosaurs, shooting projectiles, laser guns, all of that is something we really haven't seen since the original Dino Riders line. Well, I'll take that back. We've seen toys of this. We're going to get to that later in this video. But the proper Dino Riders brand has not been able to make a comeback. And this definitely begs the question because, well, stripped of all of their equipment, the dinosaurs from Dino Riders were just articulated dinosaur toys, which again, extremely popular on their own, and you can go into a toy store right now and buy an articulated dinosaur toy. So why is it so hard then to just slap some guns and accessories on these dinosaurs? Well, Mattel is the current owner of Dino Riders since they bought Tyco in the early 90s, actually late 90s, 97. They also got Matchbox in that deal. So hey, lots of new IP for Mattel to play with, yet several decades have gone by and we have not seen the return of Dino Riders. Now, Dino Riders is not Mattel's only dinosaur-esque line. Of course, there was Masters of the Universe, and I'm not talking about uh, this dinosaur. I'm more talking about these dinosaurs, the ones that were designed for the 1987 edition, or I guess extension of the line, called Preternia, Powers of Skull, where He-Man was going to return to the past, get some knowledge to battle King Hiss in the present, and He-Man and Skeletor were going to upgrade their rides for Bionatops and... Tyrannosaurus Rex. I mean, everyone knows He-Man and Battlecat go together like Arbor Day and Fireworks, 
But when you're going to upgrade a brand, sometimes you have to go in new directions, and one of the best ways to do that is to give the main hero and villain a new mount, or a new vehicle. In the case of Masters of the Universe, since He-Man and Skeletor are used to riding around on beasts, well, if you're going to go one-up beast from Battle Cat, I guess the next one is Triceratops? Hey, why not? Won't get into the argument about Triceratops not actually existing. YouTube video for another time. So, He-Man got his herbivore, and Skeletor got his carnivore in the terms of a purple Tyrannosaurus Rex, which probably is not Megatron, but that would be a very, very interesting crossover if that turned out to be. The dinosaurs were advertised in the Mattel 1987 catalog to the toy industry, and they appeared in the final mini-comics and posters, as well as the Masters of the Universe magazine. But because the toy line as a whole, Masters of the Universe, was on the decline due to the lack of main characters' availability, unfortunately the dinosaurs shipped in very limited amounts. Mostly in Europe, they did make it out in the U.S., and if you were lucky enough to own one, you had some great dinosaur and He-Man memories. And much like the dinosaurs from Dino Riders, if you were to remove the accessories that Mattel added, the giant blaster guns and the saddles and all of the equipment that made the dinosaurs sort of techno-dinosaurs, well, sure, you got some scribe lines in there, but you basically got a generic dinosaur at the end of the day. Just like with Dino Riders, remove all the equipment, hey. So let's talk about the mammoth in the room. Why is it that Dino Riders can't simply come back, especially when there are huge dinosaur toy lines at market right now? Well, for one thing, these toy lines are the product of a content a movie line, Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. While it started with Hasbro and, well, Kenner, with those figures you just saw, Mattel acquired the license about four or five years ago and has been pumping out Jurassic World, Jurassic Park figures in multiple scales ever since. So they have figured out the dinosaur-to-human scale ratio and how to make it work. Obviously, the humans have to be small and the dinosaurs can be mid-sized, but the thing that brought the Dino Riders toy line down was the expense. So with so many dinosaur tools and human tools in different scales, it seems easy for Mattel to just slap some laser guns on their heads and put some characters in some cockpits and bam, you have a Dino Riders line. Well... There are other issues besides just logistically putting a saddle on an Indominus Rex, and it has to do with shared parts. So most toy lines use shared parts, meaning a figure buck, that's what you see on the left, that gray generic human body, and you can see how it can be used to make multiple different figures. The new parts are shown on the right in pink, showing how new heads, new capes, new vests, new armbands can make a new character. Well, the same thing does work for animals. You can take a basic animal and you can add on different tails, different legs, different arms to make other animals, right? A basic buck could make it a lion or a tiger. So why can't the dinosaurs that Mattel has the tools for through their Jurassic World and Jurassic Park line seems like they could just easily put on missiles and headgear and I think that guy's like in a tower. Well, the reason is Mattel isn't just making a T-Rex. They're making Rexy. They're making the actual Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic World, from the IP, from the movie, from the content. And while it seems like you can't just, you know, copyright an animal, and Jurassic Park has certainly had versions and illustrations of the dinosaurs that were much more generic, and even uh, pre-original film walked in that old-school way, but it doesn't matter. The license is with Universal. All of these tools were created for Universal. The same thing happens with DC Universe Classics, Mattel's DC figure line, which had a generic human body, right? Muscle body can be Shazam, can be Superman, I'm sorry, Captain Marvel, can be Superman, can be Batman, but you don't see these same parts showing up in WWE, which is essentially the same thing, a human muscle figure line, right? You would think that Superman and John Cena could share the same body using new parts for heads and vests. But it doesn't work that way. When you create a body for a licensed brand like DC, the body belongs to the licensor. I mean, it technically belongs to the toy company, but the right to use it belongs to the licensor. So here, for example, you see a DCU OMAC figure behind some WWE Mattel figures. And yes, they look very similar. They both have muscular bodies. And in an ideal world, you could probably just swap them around. In fact, this happened a lot in the 80s. Just look at the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line that used a lot of superpowers and Kenner Star Wars figures. Now, the parts can physically be swapped around, and you could take the arms from one character from 
a six-inch Mattel DC figure and snap open the torso and place him inside of a torso for a WWE figure and create all sorts of mix matches like this. Because yes, they're both six-inch figures and they're essentially the same, but the parts are different. They're physically different enough because WWE owns the IP rights to the WWE body and Warner Brothers, DC, owns the DC Comics body. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, I've seen WWE bodies and Masters of the Universe bodies share parts in the Masters of the Universe Origins line. So, Toy Guru, you're clearly pull, full of, uh, you know, misinformation. Well, yes, the Masters of WWE Universe and Motu Origins does use the same parts, deliberately. But that's because this line started as a He-Man line. So, the river only flows one way. If a line starts as a brand a toy company owns, and yes, I know technically Universal will get ownership of Motu in 2023, but that's not important right now. Mattel and Hasbro own many, many brands themselves. Some that they bought, some that they created, some that they merged with other companies and acquired over the years. But a licensed brand that they don't own, like how Hasbro does not own Star Wars, so you are not going to see clone trooper parts showing up in Marvel Legends or in G.I. Joe Classified. But if it's a brand starts as an owned brand by a toy company, then parts can get shared. So it's kind of that square hole, round peg thing. Yes, Mattel has parts for humans and dinosaurs that they've tooled up in their Jurassic World line, and it seems like you should be able to use those for dino riders. On the other hand, they also have an Imaginex line that came out a few years ago, which really was dino riders in everything but name. It had humans, it had giant dinosaurs, it had saddles, it had missiles, projectiles. I loved this line. I could not figure out why it was not branded Dino Riders. Maybe there was some thought that that name might not have meant anything to kids, or it might have confused older parents. I don't know. But yeah, pretty much uh, without the name, that was Dino Riders. So while Mattel can't use their Jurassic World dinos to make a Dino Riders line, or to use them in the Masters of the Universe line for Tricer or uh, Bionotops, excuse me, uh, and Turbodactyl. Well, the reason is that it's an IP relationship. When Mattel created Ever After High, they lost the Disney Princess license because Disney looked at this as direct competition to their princesses. In fact, it was almost eight years before Mattel was able to get the Disney Princess license back. Having Monster High at market directly resulted in the loss of this huge license. So likewise, if they were to put out a Dino Riders line, well, Universal, owning Jurassic World, would be like, whoa, whoa, why are you putting out a competitive dinosaur line? And that's basically what it comes down to. A toy company is not going to cannibalize a license that it has licensed from a company to move their own. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it was a little bit of insight into why Dino Riders struggles to make it back at retail. Hey, maybe one day when the Jurassic World trend is over, we'll see something like that happen at Mattel. Until then, keep collecting those old toys.